You are listening to the worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Atfield. And this is the second worst marathon ever. Ever in history. Uh, we're doing a marathon built around the, tr- the, the rules of Pixar storytelling. There's this, a bunch of rules here that we, we're talking one rule each day. And just, you know, what it is about this rule that makes for uh, why this is a rule. What's important about it. How this helps. How you can apply it. A, to a Pixar movie. And B, to your own stuff, I guess. Or our own stuff. Well, when you put it that way... This sounds like the greatest podcast ever, <laughs> rather well, than the worst. We have that whole self-depreciating comedy thing. California Rich is only a infrequent visitor, and so despite what it sounds like, we're not going to call it that. Okay. I just, <laughs> you know, you're looking at story and how you can apply it to you. That's right. Sounds useful. Okay, so rule number five. Simplify, focus, combine characters, hop over detours. You'll feel like you're losing valuable stuff, but it sets you free. Okay, so say the detours part again. Hop over detours. Huh. I think that's just another way of saying simplify. There, there are... Tangents, I guess, that you could go off on that might be interesting. Maybe this kind of goes back a little bit to that earlier rule about it might sound cool to you as a writer, but maybe an audience might think that sucks. Yeah, it just seems like the uh, the idea is focus your story. Don't get pulled away on detours. I think it's interesting to combine characters, which is smart, I guess. You don't want to have too many characters because it can be confusing. Uh, and may get into the realm of Game of Thrones or something where you're just like, ah, it's the guy that, that, that wears that hat all the time. You know that guy. I don't know what his name is. It's like Mahaz Ramaz Gurugal. But uh, that guy, you know what I'm talking about. Wait, was the guy that they had the sex scene with? Yeah, the second sex scene. Wait, was the gay sex scene or the... the, uh, the it wait, was, the, was it the doggy style sex scene? It was part gay, part doggy style. Oh my gosh, which um, guy? He had a hat. During the sex scene, the did hat. he have the hat oh, on? Oh, he, he loves the hat, so probably, yeah. How many episodes has he been in? <laughs> 16. Oh my, what? I, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that can happen. That's one of the things that I hear a lot about, that particular and other similar novels that are super, super vast. Which, I don't know. I mean, writing novels is supposed to be much more in-depth. And we are doing rules of movie-making storytelling. So some of them may be less applicable to writing fiction in prose, in novels and short stories like we're talking about. But, but to streamline, to if, if, if you've got a... Let, let's say that you've got a first draft of your novel, and it is big... And it's sprawling and there are detours that I think this rule would help you say, okay, which paths are taking me toward my destination and which ones are detours and which of these characters are like little one-offs that would be better served if one of our main characters accomplished that. If or taking a few characters, combining all of them into doing this, and now we have a main char- a character worth remembering, a character worth giving a name that... Isn't Miramar's Dur Lagalal Menkalin? <laughs> so that you can remember their name later. I think that is probably pretty wise stuff in general, is to to focus on your story, even if it's a novel, which is supposed to be a big story, it's still gotta have a good focus. If you're spending chapters on stuff that is just not interesting. Or that's just going nowhere for your story, people are going to get bored. And they're not going to finish your book. And you may think, okay, well, big, they already bought it, so screw them. Ha <laughs> ha! But they're not going to be back for more later, which is a very important thing for a writer. You know, I mean, that's the idea is to get them back in the door and reading the next one and the next one. So, yeah, that seems like a pretty worthwhile thing. 
Can you apply that to a Pixar film? I don't know that I can. It, it, it well, we, I think we would have to have a glimpse into the writing process and things right. that were omitted and 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 cut out and yeah. how it originally went. Right? Yeah. Some of these are not the kind of things where you can just. When it's a general story thing, you could point at the story and say, okay, here's where they did that or whatever. But when it's yeah something like this where here's what they didn't do, you can't say, oh, you know, they could have explored more of Sid's house, but they didn't. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I, I mean, smart. this isn't a Pixar movie, but in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Lawrence Kasdan's original script, to find the Ark... There was there were three pieces of a amulet that had to be found, and one piece was in a temple in the, the, of the Mayas or something like that in in South America, and one was in a cave that they had to go exploring on a a, a mine car. There was a mine car chase, and they were trying to beat the Nazis to get this piece. And then another one was in Nepal, and I believe you know that's the one that Marion had. And ultimately, there was just like. No, there's only one, and Marion's got it. And we'll put the, the, the Mayan temple thing just as a, a side thing, just a very short adventure at the very beginning. And we'll save and the we'll minecart thing for the sequel. We'll cut the whole minecart thing, yeah, out, because it's going to be too expensive and, and all that. But that I think that was one of those... Focus and focus simplify and combine things. and that. Because yeah, the funny thing is it sounds very much... The you describing that... Sounds very much like a G.I. Joe miniseries <laughs> instead of... Trying to complete the mass device? Yeah, the mass device went up, blew up into three pieces. One landed down in the, in the snow. One landed on this volcanic island. One, it's, it's totally sounds like the, the G.I. Joe miniseries to me. But yeah, that was a five-day thing. And it was a terrible child's... Uh, program not terrible, but not groundbreaking or awesome. Have you seen it recently? It's not. It's not that good because well, yeah, I have thirty year old memories of how great it was. Oh yeah, I mean, I loved it when I was. Don't 10. You, uh-huh. I don't know. I'm trying to think of when that would have been, but I would say eighty two. But yeah, I, it was ten year old programming, and also I guess the the three like you were saying the, the, all those things makes it way too sprawling. Um, you can do that in a mini series. Although, when it comes down to it, the GI Joe mini series was probably similar in length. <laughs> if you put them all together, it probably made about two hours. Right, but to do a animated mini series for kids, that was pretty great. No, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't cool or awesome or anything. <laughs> I'm I'm saying that's more sprawling than what you want generally from a film. So the Indiana Jones thing, focusing and simplifying. Uh, they have one episode. Whether you, you know, even if you cram all those G.I. Joe things together and it turns out they're the same length, it doesn't matter. You go to the movie once and you have to watch it all, whereas the miniseries, you can break it up and say, okay, today's where they go to the ice, tomorrow's where they go to the volcano, etc. So it works as a five-part thing. Yeah, the episode where they went to the Turkish baths always confused me as a child, but... You didn't confuse me. Oh, I mean, you, you just gotta, you know, have the right education. So yeah, this one I don't think it's possible for us to really examine a Pixar movie because I, I mean, unless we knew originally yeah. that Merida had to do this, this, and this to break the spell of her mother. You know, and they said, well, what if it all is one thing that she has to do with that, that, and we focus on that and we have the whole movie be about that. That might be what they did. Yeah. yeah we can't know, but, uh, someday we'll get the Pixar brain trust in the room with us and we'll interview them about that then. And we'll be sure to link to that uh, when that happens. But for now, yeah, just know that it's important to focus your story and, and... Combine characters. Combine the characters where you can and watch for those detours. Hop over them. All right. We're going to do a shorty since we've gone too long a lot of the times. And uh, we're going to just kill it now. I'm Big Ankovich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And uh, 
I think we'll be back tomorrow. That's right. That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it.